With fresh hopes of actually making the trip to Cuba, we moved our headquarters to a resort on the northern shore of Jamaica. Only the squad from Minneapolis remained, Patel, the Palmers, and our film crew. We planned a relaxed day in the sun, swimming and just lolling around as we awaited the visas. But that Saturday soon merged with all the other days in Jamaica, another day on the phone, trying to reestablish the connection. Yes, I want to place a call to Havana, Cuba. To Senor Ojeda, O-J-E-D-A. E-D-A. Find out when Mr. Ojeda will be there or where he is. I'm supposed to reach him and I was supposed to call him at 11. Is he, is he at home? I can call him there. Yeah, the Cuban operator's gonna call us back. 10 minutes or so, okay. All right, we're here, thank you. The day passed with no word from Havana. So we joined the real tourists who were perfectly content with their Jamaican holiday. As the floor show calypsoed into its finale, Patel slipped away to take the final call from Havana. 19th phone call of the day, 11.56 at night. We've been, I just got off the phone with Senora Ojeda. We've been given clearance to go to Cuba. Three out of five. I'll give you a clue who the two who can go are. The media. Uh, it's, I, I don't understand it. But, what can I tell you? Uh, so, that's all I can say. Uh, I'm really, I'm disappointed. I'm very disappointed. Because now I've got the visas and we don't know how to get there. They can't go? You got it. Why? They can't go. The Prime Minister, Fidel Castro, he talked to Fidel. The Prime Minister said at this time, it is not, pro it is not going to be proper. I can't believe that a guy can be that stubborn to make it work. I still have to see it. Who? You? See what? Stubborn enough to make it work. If you made it work. Then also, when we everybody got? else gave up, you stuck with it. And we've got the Four visas. You. We've got the visas. How the hell are we going to get there? We got three people on a plane that holds eight. Well, anybody can do this should be able to walk on water. <laughs> No! <laughs> so, finally, a flash of good luck for Mel Patel. For him, the timing could not have been better. Back home in Minneapolis, the last two years had been grim. One of his three travel agencies had gone belly up. Then a Las Vegas tour fell through. The consumers complained. The star printed the story. And on Monday, the day before we left for Kingston, Patel was arrested, charged with eight felony counts of theft and swindle involving $25,000 in airline tickets. He pleaded not guilty and was released. I've had some problems with association. Uh, and some of it's worn off on me. Uh, the old guilt by association routine, but I guess you make your own bed. <laughs> As the first travel agent to set up American tours to Cuba, Patel could begin to patch up his reputation. And there'd be money, too. An estimated $10 million would be spent in the first year of renewed tourism to the island. I think Cuba, being as close with its, with its proximity to the United States, could be, could be a, a, a monumental market. And uh, I'm trying to come in on the ground floor, yeah. Yeah, right, I'm trying to pull off a coup and I'm going to take a shot at it. <laughs> there you go. Take it easy. Bye, boy. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye.
Bring you guys. guys. See you in Minneapolis. Yeah. Oh, okay. for sure. Have a, have, yeah. a, have a good trip. Right. Okay. I'll bring you back a cigar. All right. And so we left the Twin City Trio that Sunday morning in Ocho Rios and made our way back north. Disappointed with our failure to enter Cuba and still puzzled over who to blame for the fiasco. Was it Vince Bittner or the Cubans? But we also returned with grudging admiration for the tenacity, the patience, and the stubbornness of Mel Patel. We fully expected to receive a promised phone call from him in Havana on Thanksgiving Day, but that was not to be. In New York City, travel agent Norval Welch, a man who had built his reputation on his ability to arrange travel to socialist countries and one of the many who did not receive a Cuban visa, made a luncheon date with an official from the Cuban mission to the UN. Welch informed the Cuban of Patel's legal problems, insisted that he not be allowed to represent the American travel industry in Cuba. The Cuban official immediately wired Havana. The visas for Patel and the Palmers were revoked. I'm still going to put in a call. I want to find out. I'm going to get an answer. That's what we were up to all uh, this time. I'm, going to, uh, I'm not going to be afraid to call and ask. Of course, I'll call collect. <laughs> Today is Thanksgiving, and we didn't have turkey dinner, but the trip turned out to be a turkey, and that's it. Where well, we should have been plucking chickens in Havana today, we got a turkey for a trip. <laughs> so, what can I tell you? That's it. Before we leave you this evening, uh, let us take a moment to update you on the latest maneuvers of tonight's players. As far as we can determine, Alex Lopez did make it out of Cuba and is reported to be traveling somewhere in South America. Vince Bittner is back at work at his travel agency in Albany, New York, trying to unscramble the mess, salvage his reputation, and stave off several threatened lawsuits by the travel agency led to Kingston. Now Patel is still on the phone, talking to Cubans, trying to find what happened to the visas. Despite the mix-ups and his February 15th date with the Hennepin County prosecutor, Mel is still confident that someday he'll be our man in Havana. Our More on Monday crew is still recuperating from its misadventure, dreaming nightly of warm breezes, swaying palms, the crystal clear blue of the Caribbean, and interminable phone calls to Havana. And we have all taken a vow to play in our own backyard for a while. As evidence our of our good faith, we shall return next week with a report on Minnesota's largest minority group, the Mexican-American migrant. I'm Dave Moore.